My Babysitter's a Vampire was one of the best entry level shows for teens. Now, what do I mean by that? So when we, or I guess I should say I, that is, I should say I, what am I talking about? Talk about teen shows. I usually think of shows like Degrassi, Teen Wolf, maybe even throw Victorious in there, Outer Banks, even Drake and Josh looking back at it, especially with some of the jokes and content was meant for teens, I would say. But the thing with My Babysitter's a Vampire is that it still had the goofiness or cringe, depending on who you ask, of a kid's show, but a lot of the content in it felt very teensy, and I think they did a good job of toting that line. Not to mention it had some of the best supernatural conflicts you could ask for, and they were able to open and shut them in about 20 minute time frame. Damn you guys, do you remember that? When most shows were only 30 minutes long and didn't unnecessarily drag to fit the hour long streaming service quota? Sorry, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent, that's not important. I mean it is, but not for this video. Also, can we take a second to appreciate the color in this show? I don't know what's been going on with the color grading in a lot of shows nowadays, but man, it was refreshing to go back and watch something that felt alive. But back to what I was saying, the concepts and conflicts in this show were so unique and allowed for each episode to stand on its own so you could freely bounce to whatever point you choose and not feel like you were left out of an inside joke. The group dealt with things like possessed pets, a car with the soul of a vampire in it that runs on blood, a zombie outbreak that was caused by toxic coffee, a camera that made evil doppelgangers of people from taking a photo of them, an Egyptian queen that took control over all of the men of the town to help her resurrect her king, and much, much more. Literally every episode was a different conflict which kept the show refreshing, but as a result, the only continuous plot was the main character Ethan crushing on his babysitter Sarah, who's also a vampire by the way. And yes, they do explore that relationship a little bit, and they threw a few subtle hints that they do like each other a few times throughout the two seasons, but it never turned into anything concrete, unfortunately. I guess I should also bring up the movie, right? Which serves as the origin story to this show. Now, do you need to watch the movie to understand the show? Not necessarily, but it wouldn't hurt to do so because it does explain a lot. You learn a lot about each major character in the show and how they came to be what they are in the show, as well as why they might act the way they do. It also sets up why this town has so much supernatural stuff going on. Well, I mean, it kind of does, but it is left up for your interpretation. Mine's was that it was similar to Beacon Hills from Teen Wolf. And for those unaware of that show, by the way, go watch that as well. It's a really dope show. I'll probably put a review out on that at some point whenever a rainy day comes along. It's a lot of seasons in that show. But for those that are unaware, <laughs> this show, Teen Wolf, takes place in a town called Beacon Hills. And the thing with Beacon Hills is that it has some dark energy around it that drew supernatural things there, kind of like a beacon, hence the name. This town in My Babysitter's a Vampire is called Whitechapel, so I kind of assume the same thing is going on because they never outright say it. But the movie is good, I think I should say that, but you can clearly tell the movie is just there to set up the show, so on its own, there's a lot left to be desired. Speaking of which, time to talk about this show's not so stellar ending. Now, it's almost hard to call it an ending because the show just left off at the most cliffhanger point you could think of. They find out the principal of the school is this powerful wizard, and the group from the show and this council of vampires team up to fight him. But the show literally ends on the wizard principal getting ready to explode because they presumably defeated him and they're running out of the building they fought him in. It then cuts to the lead council member and two people from the group who weren't in the fight looking out on the town and a big explosion happens that sends this purple shock rave across the town. Afterwards, they literally fly up and boom, show's over. We didn't even know if it was him that exploded. We don't know if the group who fought him made it out. We don't know what that purple wave of energy was. We don't even know if Sarah and Ethan end up together. It is legitimately one of the worst endings to anything I've ever seen, especially considering how good the show was in general. Now, a silver lining to this is that a lot of the cast seems to still be cool with each other, at least to some degree, so a reboot is always on the table, especially with how many we seem to get nowadays. But I'll be honest, if they do reboot it, I'm gonna need them to take the iCarly reboot route and mature this show up and make it as dark as possible. Give us a 12 years later text and have the first scene be them reminiscent about the battle so we can actually get some explanation on what happened. Or don't, I'm not really begging for a reboot, what I have in these two seasons is enough for me, honestly. By the way, for those that don't know, you can watch both seasons for the free 99 on Roku's website. You literally just have to make an account. It says it's free with ads, but if you're on PC, a simple ad blocker will do the trick. Great rating on the show, I'ma give it a B plus. It's hard to give it an A rating when it ends how it did, and I wanna be stingy with my A ratings, so a show that just abruptly stopped definitely can't sneak in there. But I do think if you have the time and you like lighthearted supernatural stuff, give it a go. The 24 episodes it has are batting a high percentage. The show is basically condensed Teen Wolf with a LOL. Until next video, peace and light, and remember to eat your veggies. 
Hey guys, so as you could tell, there's still some time left on this video, quite a bit actually, and that is because I ended up just rambling and just talking about random stuff that wasn't really reviewing the show, I kind of just was just talking, and I initially was going to just cut it out the entire review, but it still, I felt like was good enough, and it was enough of me talking and rambling on that, I figured I was just going to make it a separate segment, and I'll just call it like tangent talk. Now, this is going to be a recurring thing, I don't think. This is just for this specific video so far. I haven't done this yet, but, you know, here you go. This is just me just randomly talking about the show. I'm not really reviewing anything. I'm just kind of just, I guess, rambling. So, there you go. But the thing with the show is, it's such an easily digestible show, and it is a kid teen drama show. So, it really isn't a show that calls for a 15, I even think 20 plus minute video. Even though it is two seasons, 24 episodes, that's a lot of content. But you gotta think, like I said earlier, it's a 30 minute show. Not only that, it is a kid show. So, a lot of kid shows, what they usually do is, the plots that are in the episode stand on their own, which is like I spoke on previously. So... Even though I might not like talk about this show for lengths at a time, don't take that and think that I'm trying to make it seem like this show is just super cookie cutter, super easy to digest and like something that, you know, isn't even worth your time. No, it is a really dope show. It gives you exactly what you're looking for. Lighthearted kid to slash teen drama. There's a lot of funny jokes. There's a lot of funny moments. The cast and themselves are really cool. They bounce off each other very well, I feel like. I mean, I guess that's part of the reason why they still seem to, I guess, maybe not hang out with each other. I know I don't want to read too much into them taking pictures together years later, but I, I wouldn't be, I guess, shocked if it turns out that they maybe have like a group chat that they still communicate in. And I honestly, I don't know how much a reboot is actually going to happen because as far as I'm concerned, based off the research I did, it looks like the main character, Ethan, hasn't really been acting too much since the whole My Babysitter's a Vampire thing. It seems like he's one of those kid actors that went to college and kind of just never really wanted to dip back into acting. I'm Vanessa Morgan. She's still obviously doing her thing out there with uh, what's that name of that show that everybody likes that? Well, not everybody. Like everybody liked at one point, but they hated it now. Uh, what's that show called? Riverdale. Oh yeah, Riverdale. I feel like I have to watch that at some point, but I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I want to do that to myself, man. I don't know. I heard some bad things about the later seasons, but it seems like a lot of the cast still continued to act afterwards, and it does seem like Ethan kind of put acting on the back burner, which isn't a bad thing. It seems like a lot of kid actors that usually is the more mature route to take. So, as far as a reboot is concerned yeah it would it would be cool would i watch it absolutely but it's not something that i'm absolutely begging for i would even be fine with maybe sarah or why am i calling her sarah i would be fine if vanessa morgan even just came out and just explained how exactly the show was supposed to end because i did see there was like some article that was talking about how like the ending was obviously because it's a kid show they beat the wizard nobody died and you know like sarah and him end up together but that's like it's just so obvious and plus it's a kid show so obviously that's probably what's going to happen but I don't know it, it was just very weird it almost felt jarring the way the show ended like that's the best way i can describe it it felt unsettling because the way it's like if you take it at face value you would think that people died like the way the show just cut the black after that whole explosion and the vampires just fly up you would think some real ominous creepy ass shit just happened but it's a kid show obviously that's not the route they were going to take obviously we're going to assume that all of the cast members still stay alive but it's just interesting if you were to take that at face value because i believe it ended on a 13th episode so i don't know if like season three was going to start off from where it left off i don't know if they were going to give us another movie like i said there's a lot of well not a lot there is a extreme lack of information on what exactly was going to happen with this show after it concluded at least from what i've seen maybe somebody out there that maybe is in canada can let me know because that is another thing about this show it is a canada based show because that was another thing about this show that i didn't realize until i started doing research is that this was a canada based show not only that it wasn't a show that was originally on disney which is why kind of why it isn't on disney plus right now it seemed like it was one of those situations where disney looked at the show probably thought it was really dope probably thought it was really cool probably thought it would really work on a network they purchased the rights to it so that they can air it on the network and i guess once the rights went away after how many i don't know how many years then I guess the rights went back to wherever, and now it's streaming for free, presumably on Roku. So it seems like nobody's really desperate to pick the show back up. But it is one of those shows where, like, if you slap it on, like, Netflix, if Netflix buys the rights for it for, like, maybe, like, a couple of years, Disney Plus, they picks it back up. I do think this is one of those shows where if it gets on the right streaming platform, it's probably going to start trending again. It's probably going to be a lot of TikToks about it and stuff like that. The show does have that energy. It is a really good show. I honestly do think it's a really good show, but 
there is a lot left to be desired with it because of how it ended and because nothing ever really got fully explored it a lot a lot of it was just like it's like mini stories kind of the best way to describe it it, it genuinely feels like mini stories